Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, you know, my name is Art Bergeron, um, and my day job is as a, a elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. You've seen them probably, if you've seen any of my presentations, you know that their goal in life is simple. They wanna live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Martha's Vineyard, on Martha's Vineyard, that means right here, not on Nantucket, not on the mainland, right here on Martha's Vineyard. So the question is, who do they need, who do people need to know and what programs do they need to know about in order to stay right here on Martha's Vineyard? So. Um, some people know me, everybody seems to know my colleague, Sandy Cordobi. We've been doing these shows now together for like three years, like a long time, I think, three, four years. Um, she usually I finds- I hang around together for about seven. For a long time. So <laughs> she usually finds these great guests and brings them on. But today I decided to bring somebody from off island because you can do all this stuff through Zoom now. You can kind of you know, introduce folks to folks who are off island without making them take the boat over. So um, Doug Peck, uh, whom I've known for many years, um, works at an organization called Seniors Helping Seniors, um, which is a, it's a, it has a kind of a unique home care model. I wanted you, and Sand, which Sandy had heard of, she'd heard of Seniors Helping Seniors, although there's nothing like it on Martha's Vineyard right now, but I want, so I wanted Doug to talk about it, to talk about how things, you know, how the model works, how things are going for them right now. Um, and, and so that both Sandy and I can ask him some questions and you can decide and Sandy can decide other players at Martha's Vineyard, whether such, an, such a, a mechanism to help people stay at home may be useful in, on Martha's Vineyard. So uh, Sandy, thank you for joining me. Doug, thank you very much. So, so tell folks about Seniors Helping Seniors. I think we first met, mm -hmm. wow, we met about like 10 years ago and you were, I think you yes. were starting to work with this organization right. and, and I was intrigued from the beginning and since it has really kind of developed in, you know, in a number of ways. So just talk about, you know, if you could, how it works um, and, and, and how you're going and how you're doing, because obviously you're all about helping seniors and this hasn't been a great time for them. Right. So you, we did. I started in 2011. So it's been uh, 10 years coming up for me uh, in April. Um, but it, it is an unusual business model, and it, but it's also a very simple business model with a simple idea. The idea is it's a non-medical model, and we also don't provide any type of personal care. Uh, so what we provide is social and, and when you mean personal care, what does what does that mean? I mean, we don't do bathing, we don't help people dress, although we do a little bit of that. Uh, but we stay away from the the common ADLs. We don't do feeding. We are dealing with seniors who are oftentimes uh, living alone in their home because that's our main goal. Much like yours, is to keep people at home as long as possible. Um, uh, and they uh, either there's one caregiver there uh, or the caregiver has passed and now someone is alone and they need just some support to stay in that home. They're relatively healthy. That is, they may go to a doctor once or twice a year, but they don't have to see a nurse all the time. They don't have somebody coming in to bathe them, but they but they need to they need some things. They need a little help around the house and they also need the companionship. They need someone to talk to and to be with because they are not getting out and about as much either. Oftentimes they don't drive uh, because that's, you know, that's just one of the you know, consequences of, uh, of aging in this society. Once you stop driving, you become much more isolated. Right. So it's a, it's a peer to peer model. All of our caregivers are seniors themselves. And by seniors, I mean, we are, we are, pretty flexible. Now we're a little more flexible, but generally our, it's been uh, 55 and above. Um, our average age uh, in the, the seniors helping seniors where I work, uh, pre-COVID was 70. Um, I know we had many people in their 80s who are working for us. Um, it's one of the nice things about the model is that everyone works part-time. So when you have somebody working part-time and wanting to work part-time, they come into your home with a very different attitude. You know, it's not the stress. 
They're not like uh, a CNA that has to go run from one client to, who's there for two hours, go to another client where they're there for three hours, go to another client maybe um, because they need to work full time. And, you know, not everybody can afford to have somebody eight hours there. So they're moving around a lot. Uh, our folks go to one client on a regular basis. So they build really long term relationships with them. I've had uh, caregivers with clients for more than five years, you know, and it, it builds really strong, wonderful relationships because there's, as you, as you know, as you get older, there's a, there's a lot of things to think about, you know, I need uh, cataract surgery. What's that like? And now, you know, you have your doctors telling you one thing, but if you had somebody who was a friend that said, Oh, I had that two years ago, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It just, it was two days that I had a rest, whatever it might be. I've had uh, caregivers go in where we're taking care of somebody who has to have hip surgery. And there's a lot of anxiety around something big like that. But again, our caregiver has a lot oftentimes been through that uh, and, you know, can talk about it. They can talk about grandchildren that they have in common. There's just so much uh, a rich conversation that they can have that it really makes it for a nice relationship. And, and Doug, it, it, as you said, th these are seniors helping seniors, but these, are, these aren't volunteers. These are people who are, who, are in, who are working for seniors helping seniors. So- That's correct. Can you just talk about who, who the, the typical senior is who, who, who tends to be doing this and how many hours they tend to be working? Just if you just kind mm -hmm. of, because I think, you know, one of the pieces of this, I think, is to introduce folks on the vineyard to this concept, you know, from the perspective of, wow, if you really needed somebody, but you didn't need like a ton of care, you know, right. you're getting well, but you need this other stuff. How would that work? Right. Another, you know, side is from this perspective of the senior, you know, the, mm -hmm. the retired senior, right? Right. Who, who, you know, maybe needs, you know, some additional income, or at least would like to get some additional income, mm -hmm. you know, really can't afford to do nothing but volunteer work, you know, right. but could you just kind of talk about who that senior tends to be? Sure. It's, um, again, it just, it's generally somebody, I, I would say at our average age is 70. Most people are probably over 65. They are retired, but they do want to keep busy. And more importantly, of just keeping busy, they want to do something what they feel good about you know, that they're helping somebody else out. And often somebody else who's um, in a neighbor in a way, they're living in the town, they may not have met them before, but it's a neighbor. And, you know, to help somebody out, it, it really makes them feel good. Um, our, we have a minimum of two hours. So we can, we'll go into and see a, a client for two hours at a time. I think with the last year, it's been extended a little bit. I think some people now want sometimes three or four hours because they there's just more loneliness out there. They want somebody to be there longer with them. But uh, most of our caregivers probably work um, anywhere between eight, you know, usually six to eight is a minimum number of hours a week. You know, many of them work. 10 or 12 or sometimes even 20 hours a week, depending on what they, what they feel like doing. Um, we have both men and women. Uh, some men prefer other men. Uh, we don't usually put men with women unless it's just, for example, driving somebody someplace. Uh, I do a fair amount of driving for clients um, at different places. We will, we will go in to the doctor's office with them, not usually into the uh, the session with the doctor, but sit and wait because you know the doctors are never on time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we're, like, we're waiting. Like, I waited. Like lawyers who are always on time, right? It was horrible. I waited 45 minutes with a client I took to the dentist um, the other day, and they asked us to wait outside because their, let, their waiting room was closed. They didn't want a lot of people in there. So we sat in the car for 45 minutes. We were both a little upset. But imagine if he was all by himself and trying to do that, you know, the anxiety, et cetera. Here, we at least could talk and play the radio and, you know, uh, keep people uh, company. So it's, um, it's generally a good a part-time job where people feel that it's 
it's something enough to keep them busy, gets them up some mornings, right. uh, but not, not overburdens them. You know, we don't want to make it stressful. We want to make it fun for everybody, you know? And when I, uh, when we have new employees coming in, that's what I stress is that, look, so if somebody's living at home alone, what they don't have is a lot of fun They're, You know, it's their, the, the day to day can be, a, can be a grind. So think about things that we do that we, that you can have fun with them, whether it's a card game, even just watching a movie together. Um, we do, we have a lot of packages now that we package for our caregivers that they bring to clients depending on what they like to do. So they have different activities to do all the time. So we try to keep people really pretty busy while we're there, busy and engaged, because that's, again, another uh, piece of the loneliness is they just sitting in front of a TV or just reading a newspaper. It's not very engaging when you're by yourself. It gets old. So, so Sandy, can you just kind of talk about you know, because you're there like all the time, right? So you're, you know, so you're doing care management. And so you're dealing with um, caregivers, you know, kind of from a, a variety of situations, right? For, you know, from, from your perspective, kind of seeing, seeing this on the ground, you know, kind of, can you just talk to like what the caregiver situation is there, right? And, and, and kind of what the need is, whether the need is being met. And, 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 and I'm just, I'm interested from your perspective. Do you think that something like this kind of home care product, this kind of home care thing. <laughs> I can't think of exactly what the term is. You know, you know, would, would, would have a place in Martha's Vineyard? You know, what, what, do you, what do you think? What do you, I know that, as you said, you, I know that you had heard of this before, although it hasn't been to Martha's Vineyard, right? Mm -hmm. It has not, but I did, I, I spent some time with someone that Doug knows well and may have been a, a good mentor for Doug when he started um, almost 10 years ago. Um, I spent some time with her over on the Cape and, 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 and really looked at and talked to some of the families that are, and some of the caregivers that are benefiting from the seniors helping seniors model. And I love it. I mean, it, just think about it. You know, what you were just talking about, Doug, is having them, you know, have something to do with the senior to, to bring some fun and enlightenment into their day. At a senior helping a senior, I mean, it, you're going to be hard pressed to find a 20 or 30 year old that knows how to play dominoes nowadays, <laughs> but the seniors do. Yeah. And, and so it, it, their connectivity mm -hmm. to the, the seniors that are coming to help them is a whole different set of circumstances. And often that is what is missing for our seniors is having that connectivity to somebody in their age group, especially if their significant other has passed on. Mm -hmm. um, or has Alzheimer's or dementia and can't really have those meaningful conversations and talk about music of their era and, and, um, and other things. Grandchildren is, is a great example too. Mm -hmm. So having a connectivity to a senior, I think is, um, is just a win-win. Doug, I had a question. And when you were talking about that you're a non-medical model, and as you know, I'm a registered nurse and mm -hmm. a geriatric nurse, so I'm all about the medical model. But mm -hmm. am I correct in assuming that if someone does have a caregiver going in with all the Ameri that is the, the medical model and doing all the personal care, for the errand running and just the companionship, they can still have a senior coming in privately through your, your group to, to do other things? Absolutely. We work with a lot of people that are coming out of long-term care that may have PT coming in and OT coming in. As a matter of fact, having a companion there really helps because yes. they will oftentimes sit with them when the PT is there going through the exercises. So if you're by yourself, you just come out of long-term care, you don't even remember what those exercises were the first few days. So it's nice to have somebody that will do them with you, that will remember them what they are will they can look at the notes that are left saying we need to do this and this and then sort of give them a little bit of a a nudge you know nobody likes the exercise alone um it's one of the nice things we even do for people is just take them out for a walk how many people will go out for a walk alone they don't seniors don't like to aid because it just gets boring but also because if they're afraid if they fall um there's no one else around you know here, this way, you're going out with somebody else who's, you know, you, you know, you're talking, you're looking at things. Again, a lot of seniors have interest in birds. There's all nature and everything. There's all kinds of things that they have in common that just make even going for a walk 
uh, a, you know, a more of an adventure, just something that you look forward to. The things that I loved about it, too, is that that there's an awful lot of our seniors. Horizons is helping about 160 families on Martha's Vineyard right now. And there's so many of our seniors that are using a walker, doing mm -hmm. really great at home, but using a walker. And they need both hands on the walker, but they love to cook. Yeah. So having a senior helping senior come in that can that can, you know, get things out of the fridge, bend down and, and help carry things from the oven mm -hmm. up onto the counter. Just having a buddy helps our seniors at home remain much more independent right? Um, than they would have been without it. I love this program. And, um, and I think it's also, you know, it's also amazingly helpful to the senior that's helping the senior. Mm -hmm. You know, it's giving them a purpose. It's, it's making them feel like I'm a little too young to retire, mm -hmm. but I want to feel like I'm contributing something in a really meaningful way. What is more meaningful? Right. And it's, and it's giving them a purpose and a small paycheck, you know, and a yeah. paycheck, you know, well, 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 at the, well, at the same time, from the perspective of the senior who is being helped, um, you know, honestly, you're not needing to pay for the skilled nurse, you know, the, the you know, the, the, the more technically qualified and therefore higher paid person. So that that's an interesting point that, you know, that you made that, that you, Sandy, you can really kind of blend, you could blend some of these services. Right. So well, in the medical model, people can't drive someone to the doctor's office and mm -hmm. sit in the car with them for 45 minutes. And let's face it, that's right. exactly what's happening right now. You're driving everywhere and you're waiting in your car until they call you. Mm -hmm. I can't even go into the vet with my dog. I've yeah. got to sit outside and the vet is going yeah. to call me from the <laughs> from the clinic room and, and, you know, tell me how the dog is doing. So that's exactly what's happening with everybody. And we have lots of folks on the vineyard that need a ride to the vet with with their dog and need to be helped to be calm sitting in the car because mm -hmm. their love, you know, their, their beautiful Fifi is inside without them. Mm -hmm. So having somebody like Doug with them to help them. Now, Sandy, you just. That is right. Anyway, it, it is a, it's a great, it's a great program. And the fact that they, this program, these folks can drive someone somewhere is, is huge. And I was just going to, to mention, I think that's another feature when you're, out, you're thinking about going out for a walk. That's a great concept. But depending on where you live, you may not be able to just go out for a walk where you are. You know, you may be in the you know, kind of end of a dirt road or any, whereas if, and you may not be driving that much. Mm -hmm. whereas if you've got somebody with whom you can you can go any place. So you can go any place on the vineyard. There are some great, Doug, trust me, there are some great places to walk on Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, I know. I've been over there a lot. So <laughs> it's such a it's just such a great place. So so Doug, can you just can you speak to just kind of the mechanics of you know it, for folks who are employed there? How does that work? So is everybody is are people employ are they employees? Are they W two employees? Are they getting a ten ninety? Are they getting a ten ninety nine? Yeah, I I, I think I think it would it would require a slightly different model, you know, on the vineyard. I think it can be adapted. The way we work now, I mean, we are we are a company. Everybody that works for us is, is a W-2 employee. Mm -hmm. So um, they get a, a check direct deposited every two weeks. That's the requirement in the state of Massachusetts that you pay hourly employees uh, every two weeks. Um, they're all thoroughly interviewed and screened. Um, they're insured. We cover workers' comp for them. Fortunately, you know, we don't have to really, uh, you know, apply any health insurance because almost all the people who work for us are on Medicare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's one worry off the table. And it's a growing pool of people. I mean, more and more people are turning 65 uh, and want to get out uh, and, uh, and do things. Uh, and again, it's something that's um, very easily doable. The one, the one piece that we have is we're not very good at socializing people to be caregivers. And when a lot of people hear the term caregiver, they think of people like Sandy who are nurses, who are CNAs, and they say, I don't want to do that type of work. You know, I, you know, I, I don't want to, I just don't want to, you know, be hands on like that. Right. And so we do a little bit of a hard time convincing people we're not hands on. Caregiving means being. Really what it is, is being a, a good friend and a good neighbor. 
That's what that's what really it amounts to. And because now neighborhoods, for the most part, are gone, friends get dispersed all over the country. So you just don't have that cohesion that you usually have. This is someone that's going to come in as a friend and help you in what you need. Take you to the post office, help you write a letter, um, even sometimes help you open, you know, decide you get all this mail in, you know, we go into some places and it's like stacked this high because they don't, they're worried about what can I throw away? What do I, what can I keep? Okay. Um, in terms of pets, my first client that I had, um, she actually lived with her daughter. She was almost 90 when uh, we started with her, but her daughter worked in Boston and was gone you know, 12 hours a day. You can't leave somebody who's 90 alone, home, home alone all day. But my caregiver would not only take her out for rides and lunch every day to make sure she had a good meal, uh, but she had two old dogs and they would sit out in the backyard and play with the dogs because the person we were taking care of loved dogs, loved animals, but at 90, couldn't have a dog at, at, at home anymore. You know, uh, when she was not uh, well, when she had a you know cold or something was lying down, the dogs would come and lay with her. You know, I mean, it was that's the kind of relationship that gets built that is just impossible in any other fashion, and it's just this those little things that just make it so important to the person. So yeah, so Sandy, so, whenever, whenever you're describing the kind of work that you're doing, I, you know, when I think about what Doug does, I mean, it's so close to that. It's because that's the goal of the exercise. Mm -hmm. The goal, the goal is to get really close to the people. So, you know, you're not going to, let me put it this way from the perspective, the person who is doing this job is not a grouchy person. You're not getting a lot of grouchy people applying. Right. It's just right. like, it's just not what you're going to do for a living. Right. right. And, and, and so you've got this, this, this pool of people who were kind of, you know, I think you would, once you had mentioned to me, a lot of you get, you get, you get retired nurses, you get retired mm -hmm. teachers, you get retired social workers, mm -hmm. people who had those kinds of jobs, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just, it, it just seems to work well. It just seems to work well. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you, there's some modifications. I mean, you know, you may be able to get a grant to start this. I mean, the thing that you need is somebody who's going to be able to schedule these people, uh, because, you know, we, it's not a one-off that we do. We have clients. We're going, sometimes it's, you know, once or twice a week. Other times it's once or twice a month. Uh, it's just that when we go, we, we need to stay for two or three hours at, at a minimum. And if there was a nominal fee involved, I mean, I think it could be done on a basis like that, uh, you know, without going a full, into a full-blown business. But the but it is a really great idea. It works so well. I've never had a client come back and say, you know, this is just not, not for me. I've only had one or two even sort of mismatches of people. I had one client uh, who uh, I, I thought they were getting along great. My, my person was really effervescent, really bubbly and everything else. And uh, I got a call from the daughter uh, after she visited her mother for the first time. And she says, I'm sorry, we just can't have Laurie come over anymore. Why? She, just, she wore my mother out. <laughs> it was just so, so much on the go and everything else. Mom just was like, <laughs> so we, it happens. We changed that and, and it was fine. This was a woman we stayed with. I started out actually working with her when she was in her own apartment. Her daughter was in St. Louis. She lived around here. She ended up moving to assisted living. Uh, she stayed there for a couple of years. And we, were, we saw her about twice a week. Again, she lived in a beautiful assisted living on these beautiful grounds, but she was also on a walker and didn't like going out walking around alone. Mm -hmm. So we did that. And she also had a bit of aphasia. So initially she was very shy about going down to the dining room and talking to people because she would stumble on words. She would forget some and it embarrassed her. So our person brought her down, introduced her, and sort of made the whole social connection thing, made it much more comfortable for her to be there. She ended up moving in, you know, after another couple of years into a, a long-term care facility, and she passed away. But we stayed her through that whole cycle. And um, my caregiver was the only outside person invited to the funeral. It <laughs> rose all over the country. And... Yeah. When she was introduced to folks, because the, the daughter introduced her towards the end, saying, this is Phyllis. 
everybody in the room knew Phyllis, right. uh, wherever they were. And they, everybody was in tears, including Phyllis, about how much they appreciated because they all knew, even, at, even towards the end when she was just sitting there, you know, by the bed, because the person really couldn't do much more than that. But she had company there. She wasn't okay. alone. You know, so so, so, so Sandy, that, that's why I wanted I wanted the folks on Martha's Vineyard to hear this, you know, and you're always thinking. I mean, I think you've done you've done a great job of really kind of developing a lot of the services for folks on Martha's Vineyard. And I know you've been really you've been really uh, active in terms of educating this, the, the future CNAs of Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> Yeah. Sandy's done a, a, is really I played a huge role down there, Doug. So, but so I, I just wanted everybody to kind of hear this. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it, you know, I'm I'm not, I don't know how you would execute it. You know, that's kind of not what I do, right? <laughs> um, but, I, but I wanted people to hear it because there may be a really a real role for this, Doug. I really appreciate you doing this, you well, know, you. And, and 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 coming on. And Sandy, thank you very much. For you know, for for being here and listening, and I, I'll be really interested to hear when we're talking online your ideas for seniors helping seniors in the future on Martha's Vineyard. And if I can help out in any way, Arthur, let me know. Sandy, you too. You feel free to reach out. I'm happy to, you know, put in my two cents however I can. Most people are always looking for an excuse it's to an go. An exciting to thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Doug, thank you very much. Sandy, You're thank welcome. you. Very much. Thank you to uh, to Kelly, and thank you to the folks at uh, MBTV for for helping to, to do these shows. We really appreciate it. Folks, we hope you enjoyed this. Um, we hope that it was just, just kind of thought provoking in terms of possibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much.